Well, hey there team, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my overview of Metaphor Refantasio. For those on across that I do overviews on this channel, I have a look at the first two hours of the game because that's the Steam refund window. Steam says you can make up your mind about whether you want to keep a game or not in that time period. And broadly speaking, I would agree and say that generally as a rule, 20 hours in, you're not going to change your mind about how you felt two hours in. So it's a short, punchy video, broad strokes info, keep it around 10 minutes and then you can make up your mind on your own. Uh, a little bit of groundwork to do going into this. This is the newest game from Atlas under Sega. Probably, you know, if, if you're a normie sort of mainstream Western type dude like myself, you know these mostly from Persona 5. That's their really big knock it out of the park kind of hit. I'm actually a bit of a closet Persona fan. I've played a whole bunch of them all the way back from three on my PlayStation back in the day. But those in themselves, from what I understand, are a spin-off of the Shin Megami Tensei core series, which never really reached quite the same heights in the West, but they share a universe and that's less focused on sort of school drama interplay, but a lot of the other themes and archetypes and that carry over from there. And then consider, they still make the Shin Megami Tensei games. In fact, I missed the last one, Vengeance. But I don't know if it had such a, an uptick. But for whatever reason, Persona's huge in the West. But they still bring across unusual little spin-offs. You know, sort of dipping the toe, but still staying kind of tethered to the Persona formula. You can have a look at the things like, you know, Persona 3 Reload, bringing that forward. Persona 5 Tactica, so trying something a little bit different in that Persona 5 space. Um, and even Soul Hackers 2, which I I liked, which no one played, but that, that was still, from what I understand, kind of set in that universe as well. But the reason for this sort of setup is to say that Atlas seems to want to try new things, but they also want to stay kind of quite married to what's making them popular as well. Probably a very sensible way to make subsequent games and you want to maintain the rage. And then we get to Metaphor, which in many ways is a Persona game, and I, I think I've accidentally kind of called the twist early that I, I feel like it's actually a meta layer. Uh, this dude carries around a book and he reads it about this future society and blah blah blah. I get a feeling like the book he's reading is the Shin Megami Tensei universe with Persona in it and, and it's drawn inspiration from its author from this world. But who knows, I'm just an idiot. Maybe I'm way off on that. But my point is, they've come up with this sort of meta layer of, hey, we're telling a kind of different fantasy story, but pff, you know, all the moving parts, themes, mechanics, UI, everything, it's still a Persona game, baby. And, uh, and it is, and it slaps, and it's really quite good. You know, mechanically sound and familiar. I'm dealing with the author of the book, and he's basically Igor from the Velvet Room. So if you're a Persona fan, you're going to love this. And look, inversely, if you really don't like Persona for whatever reason, I'm sure there are people out there that actually gave it an earnest go and didn't like it. I don't know if this is going to be enough for you to change, because, yeah, the setting's different, and I kind of like it sort of got a bit of a fantasy magic meets Victorian-esque cityscape with a big looming bad guy presence and it's got some Attack on Titan vibes in a way. So like I could pitch it to you like that. It's like Persona 5 Atlas does Attack on Titan. I mean that's a pretty cool elevator pitch but my point is in its actual DNA and what makes it playable and fun and compelling and, and the moving parts of the whole package it's absolutely Persona 5 Plus, so I don't think it will convert you. So yeah, look, straight away, I recommend it. I think it's great on that. Now look, the other thing, the other sort of elephant in the room, the other component is that it is very openly and honestly, I feel earnestly trying to uh, shift into a different focus instead of being like classroom dating social interaction. This is more political and dealing with, you know, just straight up discrimination, racism, equality, all these hot talking points that as a normie gamer that tries to stay out of fucking all of this nonsense, I have my defenses up and I'm sure you do too. Now that's not me throwing around words like woke. Or, I'm not being sympathetic to either side as it were because they're uh, almost fan bases. There are people that are going to play this game on the principle that it deals with things like racial inequality because that's what they want in their diet. I'm not that person. That's cart before the horse kind of scenario. 
I want a good game told well, and I don't really give a fuck what it's actually about. And look, for a little bit in the beginning, it took me a, a moment to let my walls down. You know, to use a bit of a campy sort of touchstone, but people might actually relate a little bit, is it's like getting your heart broken, right? And then you put up your bloody walls. And at the end of the day, the moral of Scarlet's bloody poorly told story is it's kind of up to you if you're going to let someone else back in. You can be a hermit until you're 70 and live a lonely life, and if that's the choice you make, so be it. But at a certain point, if you want to get back out in that dating game, you've got to open the gate. You've got to pop your head out. And I liken that to a lot of the political discourse. Like I said, as a normie, I don't really pick sides. I don't really care. But there are people that love to hate on both sides of the fence. And I feel like I honestly trust Atlas because of their pedigree, their track record of excellent gameplay and dealing with interesting themes. Albeit, this is kind of their first real big departure from what they're comfortable with. And look, I know I'm talking platitude-wise and all that, but my point is if you watch some clips from this or if you play the first little bit, you might be almost physically revulsed because you have been conditioned by all these fucking trash writers in the West that are using everything as a vehicle for their political position. And your walls are up, as, as goes the analogy, and you just won't have a bar of it. And such is the case of porcupining up and putting up your defences. But what I'm saying is from what little I've played here, and granted, this is going to be like a hundred hour game, who knows? It just seems to be coming out of the gate swinging and being very Asian, right? In that they don't do subtlety. So it's already made it really on the nose, arguably clear that we've got these different races all mixed in together and they're all bloody furry derivatives. And that gives me the shits, to be honest. And at first I didn't even really notice that one was oppressing the other because they all just look like weeb shit to me. But you've got, you've got the bloody bunny ear furry. I think they're like the they're like the super underclass. They're the slave type people, I guess, right? And then you've got the elf long ear fucking furries. So there you go, something else I hate elves. And then you've got these ones with little bloody punsy limp dick tiny horns coming out as well, right? Anyway, so it's, they're the main races. You represent one that is kind of norm, normal human-like. Can't say human though, because like I said, on the nose, the big bad almost attack on Titan, Titan bad guys in this, the shadows from Persona as you were, they're called humans inexplicably in this because they're obviously going to try and hold up a mirror to you and prove a point, but it's subtlety's not their strong suit when it comes to, you know, JRPGs. But yeah, like I said, they're dealing with some pretty lofty themes and, you know, it's still too early to tell if they're going to stick the landing. But I honestly think it is about reconciling it with yourself because truly there probably is a great game in here and a great story and some points to be made, but they've just chosen to release it in the middle of the most bloody tumultuous time when it comes to any of these themes in the modern West. But so far, personally, I really like it. I mentioned Attack on Titan before, but it, it really does give me that sort of vibe. It's something that wouldn't have come to mind immediately, but like the idea of Atlas coming out swinging and earnestly trying something really new and different because you've got those canned anime cutscenes, and, and it seems that it's going to go down a very political, I, Game of Thrones is a tired example, but like jostling for royal position in an election cycle thing. And again, I don't know, through on paper, maybe this doesn't sound very sexy, but to me, the Atlas just swinging for the fences for something new, this is, this is cool. I'm actually kind of really keen to see where it goes. Gameplay innovation wise, there's like one or two things that jump out. But like I said, it's actually, once you do strip back the themes and the, and the slight changes, the UI, which is magic as always, and the soundtrack, which is <laughs> magic as well, you know, it, it very much is tried and true what they've done many times before. But uh, one of the cool things I like is like when you're cruising around the open world, if you're coming up against mobs, you know, wandering monsters, whatever, you know, the grind, and they're a lower level than you, and you can sort of do your bloody eagle vision scan thing, and, and it shows a color. So if they're blue, they're kind of, you know, shit kick a waste of time, auto battle type dudes that you don't want to fight. And in this, you can just kind of beat the crap out of them with your sword, as long as you don't mess it up and let them hit you. And you can beat them to death without actually having to go into 
into the battle. It's a pretty elegant way to solve the JRPG overworld grind methodology that is used. I mean, other than addressing it and maybe bringing the grind down, but uh, it's kind of cool. And, and it's one of those things, once you see it in motion and, and interact with it, it seems pretty obvious. But yeah, look, again, like I said, these are just the early on first few hours. Uh, again, it's a pretty good system, especially for smaller indie tiles, but something like this, which is absolutely, it's gonna be something like a 50 to 100 hour game because it always is. It's, it's difficult for me to give you a super deep read, but those are the broad strokes and thoughts. And again, my, my, my main takeaway is just be really careful. I'm not trying to say I'm the arbiter of what you should and shouldn't consume, but a lot of, you know, let's call them my compatriots, my peers, generously in the YouTube space. It is a race for clickbait and rage and anger. And I don't know if that's what this is. This will be an easy target for it, but I actually think it's just guys trying to earnestly tell a good story. And it's not much more complicated than that. Just happened to come out at the worst slash best time for something like that. Anyway, team, those are my thoughts. Might just leave it there for the time being. I'll catch you guys on the next one.